Hi, my name is Dan Keen. I'm a composer, producer and musician based in London. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am particularly excited to be making this video today because it's about a project that I care very deeply about. And it's also something that I've been working on for the best part of a year on and off. It hasn't taken me a year to make, but uh, time is the one thing I just don't have on my side anymore. And um, so whenever I get an odd moment to come back to this thing, uh, I, I do. So what am I talking about? Well, about a year ago, I had a message on Instagram from a guy called Jack Hughes, founder of the Northern Film Orchestra. He's that guy whose ensemble also sponsored this score relief competition, which some of you might have seen my entry for. I filmed myself playing it live. At the time, I'd just finished my Soft String Spurs project, me recording my viola, the one you can see behind me. And I'd also just finished my DK Isolation Collaboration, which was a community effort with a piano book, designed by the community for the community, recording random sounds, random notes, things like that. This project that he was kind of proposing to me would be that, but on a grand scale with a full orchestra, the Northern Film Orchestra, based up in Manchester. And so what started was this incredible project where many people came together recording notes on their task cams, on their iPhones, sending in videos of themselves playing. And again, what I thought might be just five, maybe 10 recordings turned into 600 recordings submitted by over 40 players. And so it's my great joy today to um, present this to you for free via the Piano Book community. I believe Piano Book's first orchestra, and this is Orchestral Swells. So this is it. This is the Northern Film Orchestra Isolation Collection, or NFO ISO, as we're calling it. And it's a collection of violins, violas, celli, flutes, oboes, clarinets, bassoons, trumpets, trombones, horns, and euphoniums. There's also a marimba patch, uh, which I haven't yet made because it didn't quite fit into this sort of ensemble style playing. But if you like what you hear now, I might kind of make that for a future piano book submission. As you can hear, uh, there's a lot going on in the library, and I decided to group the winds and the brass together because I wanted to have the feeling of just being able to get started with writing straight away. I am also going to do a video a little bit later on where I kind of compose with this library and show you how I would integrate this into a mix. This is something that I've been working on for a really long time and, as I say, have sorted through over 600 recordings, denoising, mixing, producing, and then eventually arriving in these instances of contact. Contact 5, to be precise, but I'm also incredibly excited to say that we have a decent sampler version as well. So it is truly free. Now, this has one round robin, 
I mean, it's a fairly light sample for piano book, but it does have five different uh, dynamic layers. And this means that you can really get the sort of dynamic contrast that you might be looking for when you reach for the mod wheel, which is what I'm using to control the dynamics. We've also got a separate volume control for expression, and I tend to use these hand in hand. You might find me using this middle fader as well. This is CC21. It has no effect on the library. It's just it's just kind of muscle memory now from using all these Spitfire libraries for years. So this is something that I think will work really, really well if you want to complement some of your piano book productions, but also some of your orchestral pieces as well. In order to create the ebb and flow that I wanted in this library, I thought it's best not just to create sustains, but instead to actually force the players to create the swells themselves. So I created quite detailed instructions, which would be kind of boring to show you, but you know, quite detailed Sibelius documents with varying sort of intervals between you know the gaps between the notes and also varying the tempos so that when the players perform their swells, you get this sort of ebb and flow between the different instruments. So all the violinists receive the same score, but the violas might have had a slightly slower tempo or coming up to a slightly different um, sort of peak or whatever. So the idea, I guess, with this is that I'd then just be able to pull all of these recordings into Logic and start working with them. But unfortunately, many of the players decided to abandon my very detailed instructions, and so I soon had to as well. And so a lot of these recordings were created by me sort of forcing the fades to come in and out. And in a way, this has worked particularly well, because it means that everything kind of fits um, to a particular kind of groove. Now, before you ask, they, these are not tempo synced. These are just sort of performed swells. Um, and I've also uh, gone to the point of not automatically looping them to come around. I was using it for a long time. And I guess when you've got notes that are sort of being stretched down because they're being tuned um, to a lower note or whatever, you sometimes get different speeds of swells, which sounds a little bit messy. So for the most part, I think if you consider these to be kind of performed swells, you play them once and you let it kind of die away, and then you can play it again. And I think that's better than relying on a looping engine. At least that's what I think. Now you notice that on the brass accents and the wind swells, we've also got volume controls between our various instruments. And I was quite careful here to think about how I wanted to arrange the parts. I don't really know how uh, Spitfire do their sort of uh, Albion and Abbey Road, those sort of more selection-based uh, sounds where you've got ensembles of many different players playing at the same time. So instead, I've actually created quite detailed uh, volume envelopes that change based on the key range. So basically, as we're playing through the different notes, hopefully you will get a gradual fade between the different uh, instruments as you're playing throughout the keyboard. So if I just show you uh, Isolation Winds, So I hope you can hear there what I was trying to achieve, the fact that the bassoons kind of phase out as the clarinets come in, and then at the top you hear the flutes flourishing. That's far better for me, I think, than hearing the bassoons up until F sharp 3 or whatever, and then just stopping straight afterwards. Another thing I did was I was trying to orchestrate um, something to be a little bit different. I had the swells with the strings, but with the winds I decided to add this little octave jump that the oboes do. If you listen to this... And this just helps to create a little bit of motion within your scores. Now with the strings, I decided not to put these all into one uh, contact instrument for one reason that I think it works particularly well, in my opinion, to use a little bit of panning so you can get a bit more separation. So I pan these to minus 25 and then the cello to plus 25 with the violas in the middle. But also you might want to compose your parts using the various kind of ingredients. So 
even though I'm playing this as a single bus, I would like to think that you could use these um, as kind of more composed parts, I guess. So if I just give you a bit more of a demo of how this sounds. Now, I absolutely love the sound of this instrument. I don't know if it's just a romantic thing, because I just made a piano, which I think is genuinely one of the most beautiful pianos I've ever heard. Mainly, I think, because I recorded it and I produced the whole thing, and it's just got so much me in there that, you know, it's exactly the sound that I like. But with this, I think you have to kind of appreciate that all of these sounds were not recorded in a studio, they weren't recorded in the same room. In fact, a lot of these parts were recorded, as I say, on phones. And so with this, you know, I'm hoping that you can sort of feel the sense of the room. One of the things that was particularly handy when making this library was Virtual Soundstage 2 by Parallax Audio. I've done a video featuring this before, which I'll link down below, because in a way, to give you that sense of distance, that sense of space, I wanted it to feel like the players were in Stoller Hall, where they would normally be in Manchester. Whereas for many of these players, they were in their living rooms. So hopefully that gives you a kind of slight uh, insight into the kind of challenges that I was up against when making this thing. As I say, it's available to download for free down below, so you have absolutely nothing to lose. And I've missed uploading to Piano Book. It's one of the things that I, as I say, don't have very much time for at the moment, but I would love to get back into it. So if there are any in particular, if there are any instruments that you would be interested for me to sample, um, we've got an orchestra this week, what would we like to do next month or something like that? Let me know down in the comments down below and let me know what you think of this instrument. And as always, if you turn this into a piece or you use this in your productions, I love hearing them. So please send them to me either via my email or tag me on Twitter and Instagram. Really always interested to hear where my sounds go. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to Jack from NFO for setting this all up. I mean, it's just been a wonderful project to work on and I hope you can hear how much fun I've had making it. Subscribe if you haven't done already and I'll see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.